Well, looks like it's officially spring for Tommy too. Are you alright there? Tommy, are you okay there? Are you loving the weather? Are you loving the weather? Do you want to come in? He's <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Beautiful boy, basking in the early sun. Good morning, everybody. Electronics. I find that they, for some reason, are all interconnected around the house. And when one, when you get one in new, another one breaks. If one breaks, three of them break. You'll be able to hear the sound of what is Stefania living her best life. We've just got a new Hoover and it's incredible. Stefania's just loving it. And we've given the house an incredible deep clean, which we haven't done in ages. Our last Hoover, the suction just sort of went. And in that joyous moment, I've been doing my hair and my hair curlers have decided to do exactly what my last one did. So I always use the Hot Tools ones and my last one did exactly the same. This part, depending on where it swings, determines whether the power comes on or not. So I'm just about getting my hair done and my worry is, is that one day it's just not gonna turn on. So I don't know what to do. I love this hair tool, it's by Hot Tools, but I'm reluctant to buy a third one but then I don't know of another hair tool brand. And I have been thinking about the Dyson Airwrap. I've heard mixed reviews, so I don't know, guys, in the comments section, if you know a good curling barrel brand, or if you just think I should get the Dyson Airwrap, if that's really good, let me know, because I don't know what to do. And I've also got several trips coming up, and I'm really worried about taking them. I have another one from the same brand, but the barrel is a lot bigger, so the the curls don't hold as well. Anyway, it's one of those mornings, but like I said, we have um, a new Hoover, which is so exciting. This is what happens when you get to your mid thirties, things like this are your excitement. So, um, and we also got um, a new steam mop. So these are two things that we have needed desperately. Where is she? Look at her, living her best life. Is it good? I had a little play with it yesterday. I'm loving the uh, attire today, Stefania. Thanks. The leggings, the socks, and... This is your jumper. The slippers. Jet. Oh, okay. Oh, standard. Yes, you can borrow it. Yeah, that's yeah, the it's navy. <laughs> um, um, what does this all mean? Look, I've used it literally two minutes, and the, flo the, ho the floor was hoovered yesterday with the old hoover. So, we yeah. have got the Dyson Gen... What's it called? Gen 5. Gen 5. And it, it's very good. It's very, very good. So as Stefania was saying, up here, I don't know if you'll be able to see. There's white hair in here. Is that me? I hope you can see that. So what you can see is basically the amount of certain things the hoover's picking up. So it works out. So I know one of them is like skin. Ooh. Another one is like bugs. Um, I think the top one is like allergens and dust. So that's a lot, obviously. Skin is pretty rank. But I think that's a really cool feature, but it does freak you out and it does make you hoover a lot more than... And what's that time? You would not... Oh, the time, that basically tells you how long you have left to hoover. Oh, so you've got half an hour. Yeah, our last Dyson didn't have that. But what I will say is the suction on this Look thing is incredible like on the um on the rugs the way it sucks and pulls is like you've got a new rug we've literally hoovered everything and it happens to be a wonderful day as well are you done hoovering now yeah I'm just snazzed. what's in it it's amazing it's really really easy to use as well this is not an ad by the way we generally just what is it? Oh, that's gross. Um, we've also huh? popped some soil in some planters. I'm going to get some more celery in here and maybe some sprouts in here. I'll quickly show you guys. Oh, we'll have to show you the shark steam mop as well. That is something oh, that... Why you use that now? <laughs> that is something. This is the one we got, basically. Um, the shark kick and flip. And I'm, I have to say... It's impressive for a steam mop. So we we did have two vaxes before. They failed us. Both broke very, very quickly. And so we've moved on to shark. And 
This one has a really cool feature. If Stefania starts steam mopping, I'll show you it. I want to quickly show you how the plants are getting on. You will see that they are thriving. So we've ended up with three squashes from those seeds. I don't remember how many I put in. The tomatoes are doing fabulously. We have three zucchini, which I'm so happy with because last year I had none, they died. Aubergines, we have quite a few, which I'm really happy about. Um, we've ended up with one pea plant. This one here has died, but I'm happy with one. No, no one's growing. Where? I don't yeah. think that's one. What is it? I just think sometimes you just get a little bit of oh, so random growth. Really? Sweet Pepper's also doing fantastically. We've got four San Marzano, which is great because these tomatoes need a very hot climate. Our Berlotti beans are thriving. In fact, as I was saying, the Berlotti beans are thriving. In fact, I feel like these are gonna need to go out very soon. I don't know if we should do that maybe tomorrow. And then we've got two, uh, Borghese pomodori, two tomato, two Borghese tomatoes, which um, is amazing. And I actually think, now thinking about it, or also our time is thriving. Here, this is not doing well. I'm gonna have to do something about this. What I think I might do is plant some more seeds for the second round, because we're in March now. Yeah, because if we look on our little kitchen garden planner that we have, uh, if we go to March, it will tell us what we can start. I mean, I've already done these. I need to get more cucumbers because that didn't work. Um, I could probably even start planting in pea. Oh, sweet corn. Yes, I'm going to get the sweet corn out. In fact, I'm going to do that as well today. Get some more things um, planted. It, as it's such a nice day today. Thank God, because the weather's been miserable. Are you steam mopping now? This is like Stefania living her best morning ever. It's the best day ever. I'm not gonna pretend to you guys, we have not had a steam mop that's been properly working for about a year. No, Maybe I've been doing it on my hands, hands and knees, knees yeah. Hands and knees are scrubbed. And it just it. doesn't, it's just not the same. I, I think a steam mop with the heat, it kills all the bacteria and it just gives things a good, good clean. So, the reason I'm showing you this is because I highly recommend this steam mop. Um, it was a question that we had before we were buying and we were searching high and low, but this one's really impressive. So this feature, if you saw Stefania flipped it, do it towards me. So that's steaming it like normally. And then if you... So this is how you would steam mop normally, and it's got a nice big rectangle pad. It's actually bigger than the one we had last time. And then if you flip it, That's can you see is. it directly will target an area? Can you see the steam is coming out from the middle? And it's, so if you've got like something that's a bit hard to, um, I need to get out of the way, to uh, get off the floor, it gets it off. It's such a clever, clever little detail. So I'm gonna leave you doing this. Uh, well, we can bin this, no? Yeah, we can bin it. You're happy, everyone's happy. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's happy. We're currently also getting ourselves ready because we travel next week and we have several trips in April. One of them being to Poland and it's that time of year where we get all our checkups done and everything seen to. And I, in particular, am a little bit, is nervous the right word? I don't think it, I'm, I'm a little bit anxious about um, it because last year, if you guys remember, I don't know if I, did I share it with you? Let me get a chair and we'll have a little chat. So for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about or haven't been following me for a year or over a year, yeah, it's coming to our yearly, so basically, I always say how important it is to get your bloods checked on a yearly basis, just like your car, an MOT, to check everything is okay and if there is something that's up, you find it quickly and you can resolve it quickly. So, ours is coming up um, next month, April. We get our bloods tested in Poland just because we feel that they're a little bit more efficient there. We do pay for it, it's obviously a lot cheaper than it is in the UK. In my personal experience, 
going to my GP here and asking to get my bloods done is quite frankly a horrible experience uh, they don't want to do it they refuse to do it they, they basically there needs to be something wrong with you in order for them to do your blood tests and even when they do your blood test they only do a select few that they feel will give them some sort of answer whereas in Poland it's almost like and I'm sure this is the same privately in the UK but in Poland it's like getting a menu at a restaurant and you have all of the options listed from hormones to vitamins um, thyroid like it's all there and you can pick and choose what you want to get tested that's where I found out my blood type because they wouldn't tell me my blood type here you can even go as far as testing your blood for heavy metals and things like that so it's very extensive I remember the first time we went, went in we were like oh we want our bloods tested we're vegans as well and they're like well what do you want done and we're like well everything and they're like everything <laughs> they showed us the list so they know us quite well there now and we've obviously got better at deciding on the things that we kind of need to know and they advise us of course. So basically last year we got our bloods done, we got our tests back and my results came back last year and I have a hormone imbalance. That was the second year in a row that the test came back like that and the imbalance is is that my estrogen is slightly lower and my progesterone, I can never say that word, progesterone is too high so they are completely off this probably is the reason for my breakouts um, excessive hair um, terrible terrible PMS and it's something that I am trying to get a hold of and the doctor wanted to put me on because this isn't a like naturopathic doctors it's a normal clinic um, but the doctor there wanted to put me on a contraceptive pill, which is actually what I was prescribed when I was like 19. I really didn't want to go on it. Um, but at that time I had very, very, very heavy periods. So heavy that I would end up in hospital because I would pass out. Stefania would find me passed out um, and I'd get rushed to hospital. And I had so many tests done and they couldn't find anything. So they put me on Yasmin. It was Yasmin at the time. I really, really didn't want to go on it, but I did because I, I just didn't know what else to do. I wasn't informed, so I did. I was on it for two years and um, it did help. It helped with um, my PMS. I think it did it help with my acne. I think it helped with my acne, but I did grow two massive circles of hair, like perfect circles on my face. I didn't feel good on them. Although my skin was better, my PMS was better, I didn't feel good on it. and. I think it was an instinctive thing. I just felt like I wanted to come off it. I didn't want to be on it. And obviously when I came off it, all those things that happened while I was on it disappeared. And later on, years and years down the line, 10 years down the line, um, we hear, I think, is it still, it's been banned. Yasmin has been banned because so many women got deep vein thrombosis and I think died, which is very, very scary. Thankfully, I was only on it for a couple of years. So fast forward to today, 2024, I do not want to take any sort of contraception. I don't want to take any medication. This is something that I know can be dealt with naturally. Progesterone, I can't say the word, it's so annoying. Progesterone, hold on, let me um, Google. Progesterone. Progesterone. So I took her advice, I listened to her, I took everything on board that she said, and I went away and I did my own research. And um, with the hormone progesterone, in particular this can be elevated quite dramatically with stress and when I first found out about my hormone imbalance the stress levels were so high and I found that for the most part of my life I live in a quite a highly stressed state even when I'm not that highly stressed and I think this is just from, I think my body basically thinks that being in this high stress state is normal. I know that sounds weird, but that's how it seems to me. And in fact, myself and Stefania were saying this only a month ago before some other stuff in our lives decided to kick off. But it was just a quiet moment where we had nothing to really do or worry about or go to help with. We could sort of take a breather and we both found it really difficult. We both were like on edge, like fight or flight waiting for the next thing. And it's so bad. 
but from what I was reading, progesterone can tend to, this can tend to happen to women who have been exposed to long periods of stress or high trauma in their younger years. So I think it's down to that because, this is the reason I think, I have eaten clean for nearly 20 years. I don't eat meats, I don't eat dairy, um, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke. This is something I haven't done. Drinking I've never done, it's never been an interest to me. I've never liked it. Yes, I did try it when I was younger, but I don't drink. Smoking also, I smoked for a very small period uh, when I was like 16, 17. And to be honest, I was kind of pretending just to sort of fit in with people. Drugs, another thing I don't do. So I live a very clean, healthy lifestyle. The only thing that isn't healthy is my stress and how I react to situations or even just the amount of things I have to deal with. And I know we all have our things to deal with, but I'm just talking about my experience in this reality. Um, so that's what I think it is. Now, when you have high levels of progesterone, uh, this can stop you from conceiving, it causes PMS issues, your mood can be up and down of course, it's just not good to have a hormone imbalance and another thing she told me is that it could lead to an early menopause which is something I really really want to avoid. I'm only 36, I don't want to be dealing with it. So, like I said I've done my own research and I have my appointment in a month so I am really knuckling down on doing the things that are gonna balance my hormones because the last thing I want is to get there and they're like, it's the same, this is the third year running. So I found a few things that I've been doing. Do I notice a difference? I haven't been doing, to be honest, I'm a little bit annoyed with myself because I have, I have had a whole year and I've decided to do this two months before. However, you can turn a lot around in two months. So the first thing I have is something called wild yam cream which is something we learned off Barbara O'Neill Stefania is a huge fan my mother is a huge fan I also am in fact I'd love to get her book but she talks a lot of natural healing she blew up on TikTok so you'll be able to find her on there but I'll link if I can find any of her talks I'll link them below for you but she talks about basically wild yam cream and this is supposed to balance out your hormones there is another one I think it's called Anna's Wild Yang Cream, is that right, Stefania? Anna's, yeah. Yeah, so there's one called Anna's Wild Yang Cream that actually has hormones in it, if I'm not wrong. That is very difficult to get. That's the one she talks about, and it's very difficult to get your hands on. It's sold out everywhere, and I've heard so many good things. But this is another one that she talks about. This one doesn't have the hormone in it, so I suppose it's a lot more natural. And it has calendula herb and vitamin E in it. It looks like this. It says, natural plant remedies. A trust kept since 1860, Napiers was founded by herbalist Duncan Napier to care for Edinburgh's people. Today, our shop and clinic in the old town welcome people from all over Scotland and the rest of the world. It's vegan, it's a plant remedy, it's natural. And how I've been using it is you're supposed to put a pea-sized amount two to three times a day, either here under your arms or in between your legs, like on your thigh in between your legs. And you're meant to alternate that two to three times a day. So I just I just alternate it. I have been struggling to, to do it three times a day. I'm managing two. And the reason you apply it under your arms and on the top of your thighs is because the skin in that area absorbs things a lot better. I think it's because it's more of a thinner skin. That area of skin absorbs really well. So that's the reason you pop it there. It also says you can use the cream as a moisturising face cream if you wish, as it's particularly good used in the T-zones for redness. I haven't tried it on my face, but this is something I've been using. So that's one of the things. Another thing I've been using, which I've had for ages, but I just haven't been using it as religiously as I have done now, is magnesium spray. This one's from Kiki Health. You guys know that we are huge customers of Kiki Health, we love them. Um, and this is their 100% natural odourless magnesium oil spray. So when I get out the shower, I'll spray this again, either here or between my thighs. And wherever I spray this, I put this on the other place. So I'll never put them both on the same part of my body. And magnesium 
is also supposed to balance out your hormones. Magnesium is really good for regulating things. So in my case, hormones, uh, it also regulates blood pressure, regulates your sleep. This helps hugely with PMS symptoms, which is something I suffer from. So that's another reason I've been using this religiously and also balances our mood, which is something that I struggle with having a hormone imbalance and dealing with bad PMS. I am actually just on my period and I have to say that in comparison to my previous periods, the only thing that I would dealt with that was quite difficult was um, quite a swollen stomach. But I don't know whether I picked up a bug, so it's quite difficult. I had a little bit of pain on the first day, but other than that, I was okay. I did feel quite low mood sort of five days before, which can sometimes be two weeks before. So I do think there's been a very slight improvement and like I said, I've only just, I would have only been using this for about 10 days before my period started. So I'm interested to see what next month looks like. And lastly, I've been taking uh, Reishi mushroom tablets. Reishi supports the adrenal gland, reduce inflammation, boosts the immune system, reduces stress and improves sleep. So this is something I'm putting in, whereas these products I'm putting on the outside. So I'm targeting both ways. I also want to get some chast tree berry because that's also meant to help and I think slippery elm as well another two products I want to grab um, foods as I said I eat plant-based I eat really healthy we make sure to distill our water things like tofu so because my estrogen is low I need things that are going to boost my estrogen so tofu soya beans of course nuts and seeds but again these are things that are in my diet every single day and have been for years years and years Stefania is shouting all organic everything that we buy is organic uh, oh yeah the tofu has to be organic because soya is the most or one of the most genetically modified beans in the world so whenever you're buying a soya product it has to be organic it must be and there's so many great brands that do it. Lots of dark leafy greens, things like that. But as I said, my diet has is like that regardless of any blood test results or anything that's going on. I'm always eating really, really well. I've just had to add in a little routine in order to get an improvement. I need to see an improvement. I want to see that what I'm doing is actually working. Stress-wise, that is something I really, really must work on. I I don't know whether it's because of the hormone. No, I'm just gonna go back and forth here. Um, yeah, I just need to. I need to relax and maybe not worry so much, or when things happen, don't react to them in the way I used to react to things because that was my sort of inbuilt mechanism that I'm aware of now and I can change. So I'm definitely going to be taking a little bit more easy in the next few weeks running up to my tests. But I just wanted to share that with you because it may help, it may help one of you. I know that this in particular is really great for those that are going through their menopause or having PMS symptoms. This is something so many women deal with. Stefania also has her own issues with PMS although she's resolved quite a lot of them and it's taken this is the thing with doing things naturally I feel the culture now is very just like I want it I get it I want it I get it in every kind of way I want a new face I'll just I'll just buy it I'll want wrinkles gone I'll just Botox it I want weight loss I'll just get an injection I just feel that things are just out of control and I feel the respect for giving things time has just completely gone out the window. When I was growing up, I knew, for example, with like weight loss or getting my body to look a certain way, this took months and months and months of hard work. And what happens is when you put the hard work in, the results actually last. For me personally, I grew up dancing. My mum had me in so many sports clubs after school. And after school, myself, I always trained, I always danced, I was always doing very physical things. And because I've done that and I've not cheated and I've not taken any shortcuts, 
at my age now, I don't have to exercise as hard because obviously muscle has memory. It reminds me a lot of my mother. For those of you that don't know, my mom used to be the fastest uh, 100 meter runner in Poland at the age of 16, 17. And so she trained her whole teenage life. She said it was the hardest thing, but she loved it. And my mother now, you can see how that training has paid off. My mum doesn't go to the gym. She doesn't like, she hates walking. She doesn't run anymore. Um, and her body for her age is incredible. So it really shows you that taking the time and putting the effort in actually pays off in the long run. And I feel it's the same when it comes to things like this. I could take that pill. I could take that pill and in a week feel great. But what's the long term effects of me taking that pill? What's it going to do to me? What's the next problem it's going to give me? You know, am I going to have heart issues? Am I going to have another hormone imbalance? Am I going to get some sort of tumour or cyst somewhere because of it? I'd rather not take the risk. So things like this, yes, they cost a little bit of money and they take a bit of time. It will pay off and hopefully my hormones balance and also I become more knowledge on my own body. I don't expect somebody else to tell me how to look after myself. It's our bodies, it's our responsibility. That's how I've always felt. So after that long run, <laughs> you guys are up to date. I will obviously, when I go to Poland, take you guys along with me and fingers crossed my results come back that my hormones are balanced and um i can move on from this i've just had a uh, throwback moment to my childhood my mum's just popped in with um this <laughs> stefani's laughing because have did your family never do this so she's come in with this which has like eggs on it it's got vegan uh, chocolate, it's got watercress, it's got a Polish sausage, it's got a bit of cake and basically my mum's been to church and they've blessed this plate. I don't know why but I remember this was what my grandmother used to do, Her, my mum's mum used to do this and this was like the blessed plate of food in the house. But I don't remember, this is the first time I remember this. Well, maybe because my oh, mum's just, oh there's butter there as well, touching our chocolate <laughs> egg. We'll have to wash it. Oh, I was just talking on my uh, Instagram about vegan chocolate. And this one was, what brand was this? Mm. It's an oat chocolate brand. That's one I've never heard of. This one, I took a picture. What's it called? Happy, H-A-P-P-I. Happy, happy, happy Easter egg. That was an, another like, okay one. The on bar Easter egg is obviously the best one, but that was just another one. But so yeah. The plain milk was fine, then you get the salted. I know, but in comparison to on bar. Yeah, on bar. On bar is incredible. See, I thought I'd show you this because it was just such a, like, I felt 10 years old again. That was a really, really nice, strange moment. <laughs> Vanya's batch of, um, what is this? Multi-purpose cleaner. Multi one. Her batch of multi-purpose cleaner is ready to be decanted into the spray bottle for use. In here we have the orange peels and the vinegar. Yeah, white wine vinegar, orange peels. Which two has been weeks. two weeks it's been sitting and now weeks, but it's ready. Fine. That's how easy it is to make your own cleaner. And we just de decant it into this spray bottle. That was Done. Easy. I didn't do nothing. No chemicals in the house. Vinegar, and it doesn't smell of vinegar either. Like people think it smells a bit. Different. No, it doesn't. And there's some left there. And it does clean. And that's another thing. Going back to like hormone imbalances and things like that. We don't even use chemicals in the house because these things can imbalance your hormones or cause issues. Don't even have. Don't even. With Stefania around, yeah. are you cleaning? Yeah, just the chopping board. Really, the chopping board you should just use. It smells clean, guys. Like you should just use coarse salt, really, and lemon on here. But that's like once a week. Well, look, it's clean. Know. I'm really losing hope for this fern plant. It just doesn't seem to be coming back. Um, I have put some soil into the terracotta pot and the like wooden box that we have. I'm gonna pop this one outside, I think, but I'm gonna fill it with parsley because parsley is something that isn't really growing very well for us. So I'm gonna try again. And I think I'll leave this one outside now since it's um, 
since it's nice. And in here, I think I might put some sprouts and leave this is a nice like window ledge box we have this one here you guys will remember just keeps on giving just keeps on giving i've just found some lentil sprouts from this brand geo sprout which came with this um sprouter that we got stefania is just finding it a little bit difficult to grow sprouts in this one i don't know why but maybe it needs to be... They get stuck and it's so annoying to clean. I have to put a toothpick in. Maybe I'll pop them in the windowsill planter. I think what I'll do is do these when we get back because we have quite a few and I don't want to ruin them. I want to keep my eye on them. So what I'll do is actually use the ones that we've had on the windowsill already and just do an, a new batch for now. And then when I get back, I'll, I'll get into this lot.